Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the FB217, the Badger. It's the Tier 10 British tank destroyer. It's located on the southeastbourne of Empire's border and it's under the command of MacGyver 1970. Now this is the assault tank destroyer that took over from the Death Star, the FB215B183. Now it is quite an interesting tank destroyer because it actually did exist in terms of blueprints but they never actually went ahead and bought, built it. It was designed, uh, well they started work on it in 1952 based on a Conqueror hull and they cancelled the project during the 1950s. Now it has literally insane frontal armour, that's Wargaming's words, not mine. 355 millimeters of armor and it's sloped armor as well uh, so it's nearly impossible to kill from the front unless you can get the lower plate in certain places um, so yeah very good and a 123 millimeter gun capable of 480 alpha but um, it's got 292 272 millimeters of penetration with standard rounds and with the APCR it'll go through 320 millimeters and MacGyver's loaded nothing but APCR, so I think he's expecting to spam the enemy quite a bit. It's a tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it. And since there's nobody coming over the hill, or at least not yet, he's decided to go down and fight on the corner. And there's already a Conway here. Now the Conway hasn't Conway hasn't got very good armor at all. That's the FP4004. Um, he actually should, by all rights, sit behind the Badger because then he can shoot over the top of it and get shots by the enemy. He did hit the side of the 263 but it didn't go through. It's quite a fast reload, it's 8.15 by the book but you can see that MacGyver's managed to get it down to 6.97 and our AE Phase 1 bites the dust. So it has got decent DPM, but very good DPM, 3,500 DPM. Punches his first round into the Viz 55, but he gets a low roll, 458. Bounces around from 263. Oh, but the 122 TM pumps around into us and gets 340. Now I reckon that must have been a heat round. Yes, it went lower plate. Yeah, that's why he got through. Okay, object 140. Tier 10 Soviet medium. Okay, good. Low roll, 473, but it's something he bounces another couple of rounds from the enemy. Oh! And he gets another one, but this time it's a high roll for the 501 out of the object 140. Now, I don't know if you can see on the minimap, but it looks like the enemy are pushing on the other flank. They've managed to make it down all the way to almost to the bottom of the hill. And there seems to be enough defenders down this end, because we've got an STB, the Scorpion, the Conway, and an SU-130PM. 100, so I think he's decided that he wants to go back to the cap area. You can see all those bounces, they just couldn't penetrate that armor it's just way too <laughs> way too thick there are spaces or places you can aim at to try and get pens the 122 tm did the right thing actually use heat on the lower plate and you can get through in certain spots now i have the feeling that this is kind of like um the film Oblivion. I don't know if you know that uh, in the film Oblivion with Tom Cruise, he mentions the lays of ancient Rome. The story of Horatius at the bridge. Now when I was at school, <laughs> that was a long time ago, I actually had to take Latin classes and we read the original Horatius in Latin. And it was a sign of if you were a scholar, if you actually had read the poem. It actually does, it's quite a good poem in English as well for that matter. Of course, the, pump, the poem was actually published in the, nine, uh, in the 1800s, in the Victorian era. Oh, 
the enemy just lost their meal, but we're two tanks down on the enemy at the moment. And the, uh, the only defender we've got on this side, other than ourselves, is the T-95. He's a little further up the valley, and he was the guy who got the Emil. Well, if you know the Liege of Ancient Rome, what happened was that... Uh, oh, BK. Thank you, we'll have that. In the Liege of Ancient Rome, the Roman tyrant Tarquinus, the, uh, the king of Rome who was deposed fled to Tuscany and he uh, encouraged the Tuscans to try and destroy Rome when he's got the T-44. That's his first kill. And uh, what happened was that the Tuscan army got to the gates of Rome and they were on the, uh, the south bank of the, uh, of the River Tiber. And of course over that uh, there's a number of bridges that cross the River Tiber. And all the bridges have been knocked down except the one that uh, that was being held by Horatius. And uh, he called for two of his uh, compatriots to come and help him hold the gates against the, the Tuscan horde. And I'll read a little from the uh, poem so you might actually recognise it from the film. It said, Then out spake brave Horatius. The captain of the gate to every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late and how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temple of his gods he spoke to the roman army behind him haul down the bridge sir consul with all the speed ye may i with two more to help me will hold the foe in play in yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped if by three. Now who will stand with either hand and keep the bridge with me? The Romans felled the bridge to stop the, um, the Tuscans from coming into the city and Horatius urged Lartius and Herminius to hold the bridge with him. And they said they went back across the bridge, leaving only Horatius standing and all we've got at the moment is our SU-130PM holding with us. Couldn't pen the tortoise there. Nope, didn't get that one. So, Horatius urged his partners, his two friends, to uh, go back across the bridge. And the bridge collapsed and then Horatius was faced by the raging waters of the Tiber, Tiber behind him and then the in front of him the Roman the Tuscan horde and a nice lower plate shot from the SU-101 and now he's got to deal with this SU-101 all alone at the moment pumps the number one in low roll 372 Ooh, that hurt. That was a that was a heat round, and he finishes off the SU-101. He's turning to help the SU-130 PM, last teammate. And unfortunately, he's gone. So it's now just Brave Horatius or MacGyver 1970 holding the enemy back from his cap. Here they come. Pumps one in. Did that connect? don't know but here they come two of them the enemy's got a 263 and a tortoise ouch tortoise gets a pen to the side he's trying to get a shot go for the yep gets it he's now one shot 490 off that one that's a high roll he'll kill the tortoise if he can get the next shot on target there's the 263 coming to the side could pen Blocks the shot that comes from 263. Here comes the tortoise. Go for the capola. Nope, didn't get it this time. Ricocheted off. Took another hit from the tortoise. Go for that capola. Yes, he gets him. Now it's one on one. Go for the lower plate. That's the weak spot. Yep, pumps one in. Now he's a one shot. This is to win the game. Yes! Got him!
Well, I couldn't end this um, brief game without uh, reading the rest of the poem. Ty uh, Horatius dived into the river Tiber, the raging waters, and tried to swim across the other bank, but of course he was heavy with all his armour. He sank below the water, and uh, as the, the Romans watched, they said no sound of joy or sorrow was heard from either bank. But friends and foes in dumb surprise were parted lips and straining eyes stood gazing where he sank. And when above the surges they saw his crest appear, all Rome sent forth a rapturous cry, and even the back ranks of Tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer. With weeping and with laughter still is the story told of how well Horatius kept the bridge in the brave days of old. Yep, okay, that's a good poem. <laughs> Uh, I think I butchered it, but <laughs> there you go. Um, her, MacGyver managed to get a first-class tanker in the FV217 Badger. He managed to get a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got five exactly. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, one-third of the enemy, and one short of the Top Gun. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle, and a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. On top of which, he got the steel wolf for blocking the most damage in the game, as well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he stood. Well, he managed to do 5,557 hit points of damage. The next highest scorer was the Tortoise that he was up against. He did 4,525. And the next one, high one after that was the Viz 55 with 4,030. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with five. Three kills went to the STB1 and T95 on his own team. And the Tortoise managed to get three as well. And when it came to base XP... He was beaten, beaten by a tier 8, the SU-130PM, who put up a strong fight. He managed to get 1,135 base experience points, beating MacGyver, who got 1,117. And the only reason he did that was because, of course, he was a tier 8, fighting against tier 10s. And, of course, every bit of damage he did to a tier 10, he was getting 20% extra on the XP, and that's why he popped past MacGyver, even though he only did uh, two thirds of the damage that MacGyver did. So well done to him, and uh, it's tops on the columns for MacGyver for two. So two out of three ain't bad. 24 shots fired, 24 direct hits on the enemy, 15 penetrations, damage of 5,557, of which 527 were at more than 300 meters. 13 hits received from the enemy, only four of which actually penetrated nine non-penetrations and 3,680 3, hit points of damage blocked by armour. He damaged nine of the enemy, killed five, and did 546 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 39,365 credits from that game, 70,000 from personal missions payout, uh, but here's the rub. Yes, I'm afraid he did use premium ammo throughout, and as a consequence, he had actually ended up with a loss of 4,924 credits. 1,117 XP, 838 for tactical training, 3,352 from personal missions payout, and took away 5,866 experience points altogether. So, the, um, the Badger... Yes, I'm not going to do the badger, 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 badger thing, but obviously that's, most people have made that into quite a big joke. Uh, let's have a look at the armour profile so you can actually get an idea of what you're up against. It's a beast. Look at this armour. The lower plate, which is, of course, the weak spot, it's actually got impacted armour of 171mm on the lower plate, but it comes out at about 268 because of the angling. It is yeah, fairly well angled there. The upper plates, yeah, look at that. It's actually impacted armor 184, but comes out 271. If you try to aim higher, you've got very little chance of penning because look at that. 215.9 millimeters turns into just under 300. And if you aim for these strong points, either side where the, uh, the driver and the driver's mate are, you've got 279.4 millimeters actually coming out at 308. 
The armor just around the mantlets is incredibly tough. 355.6, that's the, the tough stuff that I was telling you about. And even the top of the tank, as you can see here, 215.9 coming out at 330, 331. So a very tough tank to penetrate from the front. Very difficult. The only place that it's actually fairly easy to pen is this area here. And you can see there's a dark area here and here next to the tracks. Don't try to pen that area because that's actually quite strong. It's coming out at 196, 197, but effective 288. Whereas a short distance away, it's 40 or 30 millimeters thinner on the lower plate. And you can pen that with a heat round that's got at least 250 millimeters of pen. So aim for the center of the lower plate, not the edges, and you should be able to pen through there. Otherwise, you're going to have to try and get through the sides. Even the sides are quite tough. 152.4 impacted, but its effective is 162 because there's a slight slope. The rear's a little easier to get through. Of course, remember the gun's at the front, the pointy end. Don't be at the pointy end, be at the rear end. And you can see it's only 38.1 millimeters on his tail, where his engine is. And on the compartment, it's the same. So you should be able to easily pen that area. But uh, don't try and go around the front end, because if you do, you're going to come a cropper. Let's have a look at modules. Well, you can see there's the driver. It's on the left-hand side. Obviously, it's a British tank, so we drive on the left-hand side of the road, and that will put the driver on the left-hand side of the tank. We've got the driver's mate on the other side there. Uh, the, com the gunner is actually behind the driver's mate. And we've got two loaders on the left-hand side of the vehicle. The tank commander is sitting behind the gunner, and he's got a radio set there as well at the back. You can see the sides of the vehicle are just massive Amoraks. So if you want to try and get an Amorak off this vehicle, just punch through the side where the crew compartment is. And yes, you should hit it on the way through. The engine in the centre at the back, two fuel tanks, either side transmission at the rear, and yes, on this side, again, another Amorak with the two loaders. So the best place to hit this thing is from the rear because you'll get an easy pen. But try and get behind one of these. And if he puts up a strong fight or backs up against a hard object, it's going to be very difficult for him to get be, uh, behind you. The, the problem that the Tortoise and the Object 263 had is that both of them had their gun at the front as well. And if they tried to get behind him, he would probably out traverse them and still keep his front facing towards them. The only way that they will actually reliably be able to get behind him was for one of them to occupy him at the front whilst the other one went round the back and then he's caught in the crossfire and then he could be penned. But they didn't think to do that. They went at him one at a time. And of course that was their undoing because uh, then obviously he had the entire chance to deal with them from facially from the front and uh, use the rocks that were beside him to stop anyone trying to get behind him. So there you go, that's the, uh, that's the uh, module layout for the uh, Badger. Well, this is a two replay video, so what we better do now is show you the next replay featuring MacGyver and his Badger. Surprisingly, the second replay is from exactly the same spawn point as the first battle, and game on! Now these battles did take uh, some weeks apart, so it is quite surprising we managed to get two on the same map, same spawn point, but we'll see how he gets on in this one. This tank destroyer actually does have the um, nearly the best DPM in the game. Not quite the best. The E1110, the uh, Waffentrager Alf um, E1110 and the Waffentrager E220 are better. And also the Object 430B's got a better DPM than this tank, but it's still pretty good. As you can see, he could deal out a huge amount of damage and it was very difficult for the enemy to pin him. And of course, as you've seen now in the armour layout, you know why. It's virtually impossible to get through the armour, unless, of course, they can put the shells into that small area on the lower plate. And that's exactly what the uh, 112TM did. He aimed for the exact weep spot and he managed to get it. I think he must have a badger as well, that guy, because... 
nobody else would know exactly where unless they studied the uh, the armor layout of the badger. It also has a fairly decent hit pool, this uh, this tank destroyer. Yep, Conqueror takes a high roll for 518. Oh, now we've got an E5. Now, they must be a bit worried now they're up against the Badger. Oh, he didn't pen the Conqueror. Unusual. Goes the lower body, didn't get it. Now, it's him and the TNH TVIS 51 holding the gates this time. Or holding the bridge, I should say. We have got a leopard nearby. But there's four enemy tanks out there at the moment ahead of us. They must surely know that the only thing they can do which would overcome a badger is to rush you and try and get behind you as quickly as they can. But of course... Seeing as there's a TNH T Fizz 51 in the in the game, they're not going to be too too pleased to do that. In fact, one of the tanks has actually relocated and gone around the other side so he can flank us. Of course, that would expose the weak sides of this vehicle, and as you saw, the crew compartment is just basically Amorax on both sides. Well, they don't want to come forward. And here comes the E5. Now he knows he's been spotted. He's firing in this direction, but oh, well, maybe that was somebody else. Hello, Mr. E5. Yep. Low roll, 414. But he would bounce another round, and this time for the meal two. TNH needs to pull back a little. No, you're pushing too far forward, Mr. TNH. You're in danger. Easy shot. Finishes off the E5. The good job is that the TNH with his turret can actually hold against the enemy coming up on our right. But we're having a look in that direction now at the moment anyway. If that Udes pokes over the ridge line, we'll put a round into it. And no, he's decided to go elsewhere. And we've got a Patriot coming up. Over Easy pen on that one. It's just a modified Patriot. A Pershing, rather. Engine bait. Yep. 331. Nice shot. Now he's backing up because there is something hard behind him. To enable him to pivot against the enemy if they do come around this corner. Here comes the first one, it's the Udis. Nope, didn't pen. That TNH is just, he just keeps pushing a little further forward than is absolutely necessary. He just wants to see where they are. got a scorpion behind us as well here's yeah, the first one it's the Emil now okay we've been spotted again that TNH is gonna start taking hits if he's not careful Okay, well, MacGyver's decided to bully the Emil. Unfortunately, he didn't get that pen, but can he get through the lower plate? Uh, yep, no problem. He's gone. We took two hits from the Emil too. TNH decided to go and climb the hill. Actually, I think the enemy's fallen back. The Udas 15-16's decided the valley is more important at the moment. I think they didn't want to come face to face with a badger. Here comes the Udis. Nope, didn't pen. 
you can see it came up against the tough armor on the Udez, but that's better. 383, he's out the game, that's the fourth kill. Now, yes, it's not very fast going uphill, this uh, tank destroyer. It is, as I said, very heavy, 70 tons. So it's going to be slow going uphill. You have to weigh that off against the cost of actually going where the Scorpion G's gone and driving all the way down to the end and then having to turn the corner. At least this way, he can actually go straight up to the gates and see if the enemy is pushing on the other side. And there is a Jaeger route on the other side. Now, even the Jaeger route would suffer coming up against the Badger. And you'll notice something else that's new. MacGyver's actually decided in this battle to use more standard ammo. He's got three rounds of HE and 20 rounds of armor piercing, but he's still using the, uh, the APCR. Mainly because he needs to, to get the pens. Okay, Yegru behind the rock. That's where that gun depression comes in very handy. 10 degrees. It's going to push. Can you get the sides of the vehicle? Yep, no problem. Got a low roll for 459. I think he was hoping the Jaeger would tr come out to play, so he backed up to use the gun depression on him. just not coming out to play they don't really want to go up against the badger because in a uh, ridgeline fight with 10 degrees of gun depression of course that's something that the jaeger doesn't have the jaeger is always going to come off worse and he knows that so our tiger 2 has decided he's going to push on now you might tempt that jaeger to come out from behind there Ooh, charioteer across the valley. No shot from here. Okay, the tiger's got us fairly close to the Jaeger route. There he is. Oh, and he's trying to keep his front to us. Okay, go for the flat surfaces. Go for the polar. Yes! And he gets a high roll, and the Tiger 2 finishes off the Jaeger. It was it? No, it was the Scorpion who got him, actually. And we just blocked a shot from the Star 1. There's still a charioteer across the valley. He can pen us from the side. We're one up on the enemy at the moment. Really need that charioteer across the valley to be moved. Okay, I think he's repositioning so he can get shots on that chariot here. Scorpion's chasing him out, and he's got him. Oh, but we lost the Scorpion immediately afterwards. Taken out by their TDP VTU. So now would be the time to push.
And there's the TVP. Okay, well, this is where uh, MacGyver can come into it because, of course, he can push. The others, well, they haven't got the armor. Now, if he pushes that TVP out, then the others will bag him the moment he comes out from behind that rock. He's dead meat. There we go. Shoot him there, guys. Oh, we're getting shot on the side by a strip. Have to deal with him. Oh, he ricocheted off. Finishes off. This is the STB. They've killed the TVP. Now it's just the strip. Lower plates. 464, low roll. Two more shots. 442. Go for it again. Yep. Oh, we got a fire as well. And the premium fire extinguisher went off. And again. And there's the kill shot that wins the game. Well done, MacGyver. Fairly badly dented, but still in service. Here's the end of battle results, and that was an ace tanker game for MacGyver 1970 in the FP217 Badger. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got eight in this one, as well as a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a five for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle, and he got the high caliber yet again for the highest damage in the game, and this time around he got a top gun, because when he took out the Striv 103B, that was his sixth kill. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, highest damage in the game turned out to be 5,728 hit points. The nearest player to him was the Udis 1516 with 3,266. And the next one after that was the Scorpion on his own team, who managed to get 2,789 fighting in the valley. When it came to kills, again, it's MacGyver. He got two-fifths of the enemy team. He got six kills. The next highest scorer being the Griller with three, the Udis 1516 and the Charioteer on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, he's the only player to get over 1,000. 1,234 to MacGyver. 948 went to the Scorpion. And 871 went to the TNH T Fizz 51. 20 shots fired, 19 direct hits, and 14 penetrations. He had a 100% hit rate on the last game. But on this one, one shell missed. I can't remember which one it was. I think it may have been the either the Pershing or the Yudas 1516 that he tried to hit and he didn't get a strike. Uh, but he got 14 penetrations anyway. 5,728 hit points, of which 849 were at more than 300 meters, so most of the damage done at close range. Nine hits received, only four penetrated, five non-penetrations, and he blocked damage of 1,550. Eight enemy vehicles were damaged, six were killed, 662 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 41,545 credits from the game, 40,000 for mission completion, but yet again his ammunition costs and after repair were actually greater than the money he made. So he actually only got a loss of 10,900 out of this one. Slightly bigger loss than in the previous game, but a better result I think because of course it was Ace Tanker and he got a high caliber and top gun. 1,234 XP times 4 for the first victory, 3,702 from personal missions payout, he took away 11,106 experience points altogether from this one, it was a good one. Yep, just goes to show you can play the Badger in a variety of ways, but I think the, the first game was actually the smarter one, because he was actually left all alone at the end of the game on that one and he had to hold off against enemy coming from two different directions so he had to prioritize which direction he was going to focus on first to get rid of the enemy on one side so he could deal with the enemy on the other of course he did get the help of that su 130pm which was holding the enemy back for a little while uh just like in the not in the poem horatius at the bridge his two um uh, compatriots uh, holding back the horde uh, at the bridge until they eventually fell away and uh, he had to hold it all alone uh, but a great game and in fact two great games so if you enjoyed those replays please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching